Hi, I'm Dave here at Core Electronics, and today we're going to learn how to set up Python on the Onion Omega 2. Let's get started. All right. As always, we have an Onion Omega 2 board plugged into a suitable dock, and I've also hooked up some LEDs to GPIO 0 and GPIO 1 so that we can get started on controlling those pins with our Python programs later. Okay, now we're going to perform this installation using the uh, GUI console. So we need to make sure that our PC and our Onion Omega are both connected to the same Wi-Fi network and that we have a working internet connection. Bring up your browser, go ahead and log in either to your Onion's IP address or using its Omega-name. I'm going to use the IP address. Should bring up the console login momentarily. Log in, remember the default username is root and password is onionear. If you've changed that password, then enter the password you set up. All right, now we're in the GUI console. The first thing we need to do is bring up the terminal. Log into the terminal as well. Same login, same password. Okay, now we're ready to get started. Okay, now we can go ahead and install Python. First command we need to run is an opkg update, which will update the package manager to make sure we get the most recent version of Python available. When you're installing anything using opkg, it's always a good idea to run the update command first. Okay, now that's completed successfully. We can see signature check passed. So now we can install Python with this command, which is opkg install and Python. Now before we press return, we actually have a couple of different options, or four options to be more precise, about which version of Python we install. There's Python 2.7, which is commonly known as Python, and there's Python 3. There's also a light version of both of those flavors, uh, which I would personally recommend using on the Onion Omega uh, because of its limited uh, storage space available. Uh, I think you're better off to install the light version of Python and then to manually install the modules that you need for a specific project. But that's just me. You can certainly install the full version of Python. It will definitely still fit. If you wanted to install Python, you'd use the commands you can see there on the screen. If you wanted the light version, you would add dash light. If you wanted to install Python 3, you would add the 3 at the end. And if you wanted the light version of Python 3, you would add the 3 and the dash light. As I said, I'm going to use Python 2 and the light version. Okay, Python successfully installed. However, before we go running off and start work on our first Python program, we should probably cover how to install uh, Python modules, especially since I installed the light version of Python, and so very few modules have been installed with it. There's two ways to install the Python modules or packages. One is using opkg, uh, which is certainly the simplest method, uh, but only has a reduced number of libraries available. Uh, and there's also using pip. So I'll start with uh, opkg. We'll do the opkg update. It's not really necessary since I only did it a few minutes ago, but it's good practice. Okay, now if we want to list all the packages available, we go opkg list pipe symbol grep python or python3 if you only want the python3 specific packages. As you can see, this lists both a great many Python packages, including one we really need to make use of, Python pip, that's for the next section, and a great many Python 3. All right, before we move on to pip, there is a package that we should install with OPKG uh, that we'll use later, and that's pyonion-gpio, uh, which is the Python module that'll let us control the onion omega's GPIO pins. So we can install that one with opkg install ok 
paste pi onion with a capital O and GPIO with a capital G only. Seems I already had that one installed, so we're good to go. All right, we'll also install pip. Which is opkg install python-pip or python3-pip if you're using python3. Okay, pip's been successfully installed. If you wanted to install a module using pip, it's much the same as opkg. It's pip install and then the module name. Now that we have Python successfully installed, let's write our first uh, Hello World program. Click on the onion symbol to go back to your console uh, start page and bring up the editor. Go. Now I like to create a folder inside root. There it is, called Python. Uh, to store my Python programs when I'm experimenting. Um, if you won't have the folder there yet, so just click on New Folder to create it. All right. Once we're in the folder, let's create a new file, and we'll call this Hello World. Okay, the file has been created, uh, but a little quirk of this interface, it doesn't actually open it. You have to then click on the file you created to open it. All right, there's an empty file. Now, to get our Python program to say hello world, all we have to do is add the command print hello world with single quotation marks. Click save on that file. Confirm save, yes. Save successful. Excellent. Now we can go back to the terminal. Change directory into the Python folder we created. You can see it's got a few Python programs there. Well, most note is hello world.py. To run it, all we do is type Python or Python 3, if you're using Python 3. Hello world.py. There we go. Hello world. Program has been successfully run. Let's have a look at a program that's a bit more interesting than just hello world. Uh, something that actually makes use of the GPIO input output pins present on the Onion Maker 2. If you head into the editor, and you can create a new file and type what you see here, or you can get this code from our tutorial page. I'm going to open this file blink.py, which is one I've uh, created earlier. Um, let's just run through it, shall we? The first, we need to import a couple of libraries. Uh, we import the time library so that we can keep track of time to get the LED to flash on and off. And we import the onion GPIO library so that Python knows how to turn the GPIO pins on and off. Um, that's all in lowercase except the G. There are a few uppercase, lowercase nuances with the onion libraries. Uh, so they do take a little getting used to. All right, so first up, we've got a variable that's controlling which pin we're going to operate on. I was using zero, I'm going to change it to pin one. The next line, line five, creates a new object to control the uh, GPIO pins, which is GPIO object equals onion GPIO dot onion GPIO of GPIO num. So this is just going to use the onion GPIO library to create an object to control GPIO pin one. That's so pin one's come from that line there. Just a heads up, the first onion GPIO, the first O is lowercase. The second onion GPIO, the first O is uppercase. Like I said, there's a few eccentricities. 
Line 8 down here is going to set that pin to be an output. So we've got status equals dpr object dot set output direction. And the zero here just means that it's going to start in the low state. Um, if we were writing a more complicated program, we could have a line that actually checks the status variable to make sure this command executed okay. Uh, but since we're just experimenting here, we'll just assume that it's worked. We'll know pretty quickly if it hasn't, because the light won't flash. Okay, we have down here loop equals one, because the it's an infinite loop, it'll always equal one, and value equals zero. This is just a variable to store the LED state in. So we got while loop equals one, and loop always equals one. So like I said, this loop will just continue ad infinitum. And this section of code here is what toggles the value. If the value was equal to zero, then we set it to one. Anything else, and we set it to zero. And now we write the new value to the GPIO pin. So we got status equals GPIO object dot set value value. So that line here will either turn the pin on or off, depending on the value variable. And we're also going to print out the status of the GPIO pin. Um, so we've got some feedback on the terminal as well. We've got GPIO set to a GPIO num and value being written in there. And then we need a delay um, to control how fast the LED is going to flash. Um, this one's here set for five seconds, but I think that's far too long. So I'm going to set it to one second. All right, now we should be able to save that file, return to the terminal, and execute it with python link dot pi. There we go. And if we look on the board, we should see the LED flashing. I hope you've all managed to successfully set up Python on your Onion Omega tip. If you've run into any issues, please don't hesitate to leave some comments below or head over to our forum. We've got a full-time team of makers here and we're always happy to help out wherever we can.